Hey, Wonder Hussy here. Believe it or not, I'm in Death Valley. It's really nasty weather today and very unseasonably so. It's late March. It's usually way nicer this time of year, but some kind of nasty storm uh, is blowing in from, gosh, I guess the Sierras. And I think it's even snowing. So it's just really a surreal kind of gloomy day, but it's actually perfect considering the site that I'm at. I'm out here at the side of California Highway 190 that runs through Death Valley at this lonely desert grave. Man, I've been to a lot of lonely desert graves in my day, and this is without question one of the saddest. Look at this. It says, McKellips, 1874. Lorenza died in infancy. Larkin, four years old. Well, the story behind this grave is every bit as sad, if not sadder, than you're probably thinking. I guess the story is, uh, there was a couple named Lorenzo and Nancy McKellips who operated a stagecoach station right here back in the 1870s. Remember back in the 1870s, there were no railroads that ran through this part of the country. So if you wanted to get anywhere, you either had to walk, take your horse and wagon, or take the stagecoach. Well, the McKellipses ran a stagecoach station called Orin Station here, and they had two little girls named Lorenza and Larkin. Well, unfortunately, in January of 1874, there was some kind of plague, probably some kind of uh, influenza or something, which is ironic considering that I'm shooting this video on March 26, 2020, right during the coronavirus pandemic. Well, there was some sort of similar virus going around back then in January 1874. And unfortunately, little Lorenza and Larkin both died. I mean, as a parent, they say one of the hardest things in the world is losing a child. Well, can you imagine losing both your children in the span of, well, probably a few days? It's just heartbreaking. In fact, it was so heartbreaking that after the little girls died, the parents buried them, closed down the stagecoach station, and left. Uh, I wasn't able to find out where they moved to, but they probably just wanted to get away from this area because it had too many painful memories. Anyways, when the parents moved, I guess they just kind of had a really rough wooden cross erected at the gravesite of their little girls. And well, years went by, decades went by, and the cross got really weathered to the point where you, I don't even think you could read the names on it anymore or barely read the names on it anymore. But a local miner, one of the miners who worked in these local mountains, I mean, there's a ton of mining in this area. Uh, Cerro Gordo is, well, just up there in all those clouds and there were you know tons of mines in this area well a local miner named i think bill james in 1947 found the grave and restored it like built a really nice cross i don't know if this is the original cross he built or what but he maintained it he took care of their grave and made sure there were flowers on it and it looked nice uh i guess him and some of the locals took care of the grave for gosh decades until finally the state of california decided to build Highway 190 going through Death Valley. And well, you can see the highway goes right past this grave site. You know what I mean? Like, I guess some of the locals were worried that uh, the Department of Transportation or whoever builds the highways would invoke eminent domain or something and just pave right over the grave site of the little, uh, the little girls right here. So I guess a bunch of locals got together and petitioned Caltrans to please maintain this grave site. And well, guess what? For once, uh, the government listened. And I think to this day, the California Department of Transportation, Caltrans, maintains this grave site. I mean, you can see there's a little turn off off the highway, kind of little area you can pull in and pay your respects. And I guess, you know, I guess Caltrans comes out of here every now and then and cleans the place up. That's pretty cool. And you can see that visitors stop by here and leave little items for the girls. Like it looks like somebody left them a little toy car couple cowboy boots, some flowers. I mean, who knows? There was probably a lot more stuff on this grave, but it's so, the weather is so intense out here that gosh, it probably just gets blown away into the sagebrush. 
You know what I mean? Like, it's either 130 degrees baking hot here, or it's friggin' snowing like it is right now. And in fact, the weather is so nasty and it's so windy that the audio is probably not very good in this video. And I did consider just skipping this site and, you know, leaving it for another nicer day. But then I thought about it and, hey, that's life, man. These poor little girls are a reminder, and just like this weather is a reminder, of how tough life was out here back then, before the advent of air conditioning and cars and trains and all the things that make, well, modern life in the desert bearable. They didn't have any of that. So this weather being this crappy is kind of sadly fitting. But what's also fitting is the fact that, like I said, it's late March. In fact, it's springtime here in the desert. And look what nature left for these little girls. Look at all these tiny little yellow wildflowers growing all over their grave. That's pretty cool. And moreover, these little tiny yellow wildflowers can't blow away like these fake plastic flowers. So thank you, Mother Nature. Thank you for looking after the little McKellips girls. Oh man, if you're ever driving through Death Valley coming in from the east, stop off and pay your respects it's right off the highway right here doesn't take any time at all and it's just a really cool piece of history if a sad one anyway i can see snowflakes in the air and my hands are frozen so girls i will stop and see you next time hopefully when it's sunnier